can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only That whoever believes in him should never die, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Is it true? Is that song true? Because it is. How many of you from Namibia? Botswana. Zimbabwe. My goodness, I think I have to come to Zimbabwe. <laughs> wow. You are wonderful. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right, which other country? What? No, I, I, I'm hearing some of you saying South Africa. Relax. Okay, all others outside South Africa, all others, if I haven't called you, can I see you? Great. Then South Africa. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. You are all so blessed. Do you have your Bible? First Corinthians. Chapter 15. And we're reading from verse 45. You ready? It says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. What do you mean quickening spirit? That means a life giving spirit 
<laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Can we take this? He says the first Adam was made a living soul. That's what the Bible says, that God breathed into Adam's nostrils. And he became a living soul. Some translations say a living being. So, it says, it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, Jesus, is the second and last Adam. And you know, he calls him the second Adam and calls him the last Adam, so we know there's not going to be a third one. He's the second and last. Praise God. So, he says, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, a life-given spirit. I want you to notice the difference between these two Adams. First Adam, a living being, a living soul. The second Adam, a life-giving spirit. Wonderful. Look at it again. The first Adam, a living soul. The second Adam, a life-giving spirit. So everyone that was born after the first Adam is a living soul. Everybody who's come from the first Adam is a living soul, a living being. That's all they got. That's who they are. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Living souls, living beings, that's all they are. The last Adam, Jesus Christ. Let's read again. Can we? Same verse 45. So and so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. A quickening spirit. A life Given spirit, life given spirit. I want you to hold this in your mind as we progress in our reading. Okay? See why you must have a Bible? You've got to have a Bible. Everybody ought to have a Bible. I know some of you have one, one Bible, family Bible. <laughs> it's nice to have a family Bible, but everybody must still have a Bible. Hey, when you go to church and wife is holding Bible for both, <laughs> and so you're sitting beside each other, and the pastor says, open to... And you look like this, and the other one looks like this, they're, they're both looking at the same Bible. It's not good enough for study. You're not serious when you, when you come to church like that. Not very serious. You ought to have your own Bible. You must have your Bible. Things have changed nowadays. Nowadays, you can carry your Bible in your electronic device, like your telephone, Actually, for years, I've told pastors particularly, I tell leaders, if your phone doesn't have a Bible, it's not a phone, it's a stone. <laughs> I 
don't use any phone that I can't put my Bible. When I get a new phone, the first thing I do is put my Bible. Because the phone has become so personal to you. You go everywhere with it. You know what I'm talking about. You can't even go into the bathroom without your phone being close by. <laughs> Nothing should be closer than your Bible. If you can't put your Bible in your phone, it's a stone. Get rid of it. That means throw it away. <laughs> you know, whenever, if you show me a nice phone, you say, Pastor, I got a nice phone. I say, does it have a Bible? No, it's not a phone. It's a stone. <laughs> You must have your Bible with you. No one has an excuse anymore. Because you see, there's so much in the Word of God. How can you miss things like this? This is good stuff. See, and if, if you don't go into the Scriptures to discover these things, you will never live to your best potentials. You'd be like that man who came and never really came. Let's have the best of you. Give your best to God. Did you hear me? Become the best of you. Don't settle for anything less. Be all you can be. Let nothing stop you. Be all you can be. I made up my mind, I'm going to be all I ought to be. Leaving nothing out. And I got the Holy Spirit to help me make it happen. Amen. Hallelujah. The, the Holy Ghost will help me make it happen. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read Father. Got your Bible now? Yes. All right, when we finish, if you don't have a Bible, go and buy one. All right? Make sure you buy one. And plus that, if your phone doesn't house a Bible, it's not worth taking along with you. Get another one. Praise God. Okay, so are you there? Verse... 45 and we're going into 46 okay all right and so it is written the first adam the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam was made a quickening spirit how be it that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual what he's saying is the first one that came was the natural after that the spiritual so the first adam was the natural adam the second adam was a spiritual adam okay the first man, verse 47, and now you got to get this. Don't miss me here. You do take a pillow and sleep. Yeah, because this is so, so vital. Verse 40, 47, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Hmm. Verse 48. Take this seriously. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. <laughs> See, I'm a heavenly man. <laughs> See where I came from. Hello. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 
All those who have never been born again are thirty. And all those who are born again are heavenly. Yeah. Say, I'm heavenly. Amen. Close your eyes for a second and say, I'm a heavenly man or a woman. Amen. Say it again. Amen. I know my origin. Think like this in your life. Think like this. You see, this is the way I think. These are not sermons. I'm just sharing with you things that are true with my spirit. These have been my sonesses for years and years. These are the thoughts that have shaped my mentality. I can't think otherwise. I can't think otherwise. So important. They had been my cogitations. I thought upon them, meditated on them for long. I got into my spirit. There's more. Can I show you more? Okay. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus. You know, you know, King James translation is about the 14th or 15th translation, depending on how you want to make the count. Some even say 13th. So is that 13th, 14th, or 15th? A little dispute about, you know, a few numbers. But that's just to say, King James translation is not the first translation. But you know, some people think God talks King James. <laughs> you know, they think that's God's language. Thou and thee and, and so on and so forth. They think God talks King James. Well, I like King James. And uh, most Christians around the world like King James because it's the most popular among us. That's actually the reason. Most of us grew up knowing only King James. Okay? So, King James is wonderful. But you see, in a few areas, it's got a little cloud. And so, you want to know more, you got to go deep into it and argue a little bit with King James. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, I'm going to show you just a little, one of those little portions where, got to say King James, not exactly so. Okay? You ready for this? Okay. <clears throat> Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the Eti, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. There I say, King James, well, that ain't true. Not exactly so, because that's not, that's not what the original actually says. Now, why would they say things like this? Because you see, a lot of times people are afraid to believe truth. You know, some of these things are shaky. There are people who listen to this kind of stuff that I'm sharing with you, that I've been sharing with you a few days, and they say, oh, that's getting too far. <laughs> so that's, that's getting too far now. They'll prefer us to say, we are nothing before thee, O oh God. <laughs> like that song, you know, we changed a little bit. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch. That's the way they wrote it. That saved a wretch like me. And, and, and that guy wasn't thinking that he was a wretch. And he's no wretch anymore. No, he still thinks he's a wretch. So, we change that tweet a little bit. That saves someone like me. Ain't that better? <laughs> Listen, 
even the sinner. God didn't look at him like a wretch. God looked at him like he's valuable. That's why Jesus came. Hey, you don't pay for nothing. Jesus paid with his blood for something because those sinners were something to God. They were valuable enough for God to pay that price. So you see, the lots of nice songs, we can sing a lot of them. The nice, we used to sing them when we were ignorant. But you know, you come to learn more of God's word, it's difficult to sing them. I mean, there's a lot of nice songs. I told our people, our, our, our singers, I said, write new songs. Don't you sing those old songs? A lot of them are so terrible. There's some good ones. We sang some good old songs just now. But, the, but the, a lot of them that you sing and you feel like you're close to God, but it's a lie. <laughs> write new songs. Sing new songs. Sing songs that are consistent with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's some I just can't sing. I used to sing them. For example, I used to sing, Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to that precious bleeding side. Oh, I used to sing it good. But when I got to know the word, draw me nearer. The only fellow who talked about drawing near to God was James. And James was that pastor in Jerusalem who was, who was the, uh, um, the preacher of the law, even after he had known the truth. He was the one who sent people to go and, um, and intimidate Paul, the apostle. And they couldn't. But they got Peter. They got Peter the Pope. James sent them. This James. <laughs> and he was the one who said, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. How can you draw nigh to one who is inside you? <laughs> you get it? He's the only one who talked like that. And you study, study his words. He was concerned about the Jews. He was afraid of them. And he had to be close enough to the Jew and be close enough to the real Christian and be in the middle of them because he was in Jerusalem. <laughs> he knew what could happen. So much about James. I want to sit and discuss with him 10,000 years when I get to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but here's the point. It's good to know the word. It's so important. So, so important. James was the one again who said, is any sick among you? Because he was a pastor. He knew that even though we shouldn't be sick, a lot of them got sick. He knew. He was a pastor. So he said, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. James realized by the time you're an elder, you shouldn't get sick. Because if the heir of God's sick, who's he going to call? But he knew there were babes in the church. And most of them were Jewish minds. So he said, draw nigh to God. He's talking to the babe in Christ who hasn't understood yet. And he's thinking, when I pray, Sometimes my prayer just hits the ceiling. <laughs> what am I going to do to be closer to God? You know, they love God so much, they want to be close. And that's why they sing this, draw me near. A beautiful hymn, I sang it for years. And when I sang it, I felt like I was drawing nearer. <laughs> and then it said, to the precious bleed in sight. When I studied the word, I was amazed at what I found. I dropped the song. I stopped drawing nearer. 
I thought it was better to have him inside me. Yeah. Jesus said, you in me, I in them, talking to the Father, and let them be one in us. So you see, I'm in him, he's in me. How close can you get? When you, when you know that, you never feel far from God anymore. You know those Christians who say, I just feel far. I don't know what I do. I just feel far. I just feel far. Have you ever felt yourself like something's wrong? You don't know what's wrong. You just feel, I don't know. I'm just far from God. <laughs> because you feel like you've not been living right. You've not been doing some things right. And so you're far from God. God doesn't come and he doesn't go. He's big enough to fill everywhere. And he's in your heart. He lives in you. And you are in him. Become conscious of his presence with you. And you'll be amazed how your life of righteousness will blossom. Hallelujah. Say, I walk in righteousness. You know, the Bible says the babes, babes in Christ have not... Um, uh, have uh, are unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. That means the doctrine of righteousness is to be used as a weapon. It says they're unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. There's a teaching about righteousness that you should have, that you should know It'll make you strong. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm righteous. Because God made me righteous. See, you don't attain righteousness. It's a gift from God. Romans 5, 7, 17. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. You see, they shall reign in life. When you understand the doctrine of righteousness, you reign. You reign as a king. Nothing shakes you. You reign. You make things happen. There's a song we used to sing years ago. I sing it only for babes nowadays. I hardly sing it. But, you know, I can still sing it for babes if I want to. But I want to listen to it. A nice one. Something wonderful, great, and marvelous. Something good is going to happen to you. So we sing, something good is going to happen to you. Do you know it? Happen to you this very day. Do you know the song? Uh, it's an old, old song. But I, I, I can't sing it like something good is going to happen to me. Why? Because I don't let good things happen to me. And I don't let bad things happen to me. I don't let nothing happen to me. Why? I'm in the class of God. Things don't happen to us. We make things happen. And then we are happening. So say, say this with me. I happen and I make things happen. See, for the babes... They want something to happen to them. Good things that happen to them. And sometimes bad things happen to them. Things don't happen to us. If it's in my aeon, doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. If it's in my aeon, I'm going to walk through in victory. The question is, what is my aeon? Doesn't matter what lies there. If it's supposed to be there, then it's for my promotion. Yeah. I'm going to have a testimony. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to have a testimony. Yeah. Then if it's not in my aeon, what am, I, what am I doing there? What do you mean by aeon? I don't know some of you say, what do you say, aeon? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just a little popular Greek. <laughs> Soli gondo grisca parastos. Agis con jalamande gila onkos que vrabatistes. 
שלא אומרו פתי לו, אורונס גוז'ה בקטר אורונס זאת, כאילו גרונס גבצי ז'וס אורס, לורינו בוס כופרת, פלרונס גיזו פתי שונדי. הללויה. Does somebody have the interpretation? You do? Anybody? You, 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 were, you were listening in your spirit. Yeah. So it's the word that I've given to you is so simple. But the world can never know it because it doesn't belong to them. But the word that I've given you strengthens you and leads and guides you because it is your light. And that light is in you because you are light yourself, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And the oneness that you have with my spirit and my word is your victory. That's what I said in other tongues. Praise God forevermore. Are you still there? Okay. I was going to read something to you now. I was talking about King James. All right. You're still ready? Okay. Verse. Verse 49. And as we have born... The image of the ethy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And I said, uh uh, not quite, not quite, not quite, because that's not what the original says. So King James tried to be a little religious. That is the translators, okay? They tried to be a little religious. Um, they, they're like, you know, um, oh God, I help you know the song? In ages past, I hope for years to come. Says nothing about now. He talks about the past and talks about the future. And says nothing about now. But God says my name is I am. He's in my present. What's God to me today? See, the relevance of Jesus Christ in me today thank God for the past thank God for the future but you see that future can only be determined by today so I go back to verse 48 as is the earthy such are they also that are earthy and as is the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly now am I thinking solo no do you have the amplified translation anybody got the amplified okay I have the amplified right here but I don't read from mine I want to read from yours so you just know it's the same right let's see if you would find that at home if you were at home, you know, one day I read a scripture and somebody said he went back home, searched everywhere, couldn't find it. He said, he don't know what Bible Pastor Chris was using. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Somebody's got the Amplified. You want to read it to us? Who's got it? Now, let me tell you something about Amplified. Amplified doesn't mean they're telling us something that's not supposed to be there. My voice is being Amplified to you now. If you don't think what you're hearing is what I'm saying, read my lips. <laughs> okay, who's going to read it to us? There's a, uh, there's a lady over there who wanted to read it. Yeah? Okay, who's got it? Anybody here? You got it? Okay. A microphone? Thank you. All right. You're reading verse 49, right? Yes, yes, okay. Sir. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Thank you. It reads, and just as we have borne the image of the man Listen. of dust. Listen. Go on. Just. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall we, and, and so let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. Say it again. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall we and so let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. Did you notice what the Amplified did? And so shall we uh, uh, let us? Yes, sir. Did you notice? Yes, sir. Because he had to agree that mm, there's that thought. So shall we futuristic. But he, he couldn't agree fully. He says, let us. 
Did you notice that? Yes, sir. So let us bear, right? Yes, sir. That means it's up to us and we got to do it now, right? Let us bear. Read it again. Listen. Mm -hmm. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, mm -hmm. so shall we and, and so let us also bear. So the shall image. we and so let us bear the image of the man of heaven. Let us bear the image of the man of heaven. What is telling you is that that scripture is actually in the now. Let us bear the image of the man of heaven. The Bible says, now that's very consistent with all the teaching of the New Testament. Because when God talks about image here, he's not talking about the outward man. After all, he already told us that the heavenly man, that the, 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 the second man is the Lord from heaven and that he's spiritual. He says the first one is the one that's natural, the second one is spiritual. So he's dealing spiritually. He's not talking about how wide your nose is. He's not talking about how, how, how straight your ears are. That's not what he's talking about. So when he says, let us bear the image. He's not looking at the outward man. He's dealing with the spirit man. That means, when he talks about bearing the image, he says, let's live like him. Let's do like him. Let's look like him. And let's look like him is not in the suit or your blouse. It's in what comes out of you when you do what you do. What comes out of you when you talk. Oh, glory to God. The outshowing of the inner man. That's called grace. Hallelujah. First epistle of St. John, chapter 4. Verse 17. I want you to see that. It's very consistent with what you, what you just read now. First epistle of St. John, chapter 4, in verse 17. Can you go there? All right, have you found it? Okay, let's read. One, two, go. Herein is our love made perfect. Uh huh. That we may have boldness, hallelujah, in the day of judgment. Oh, I like that. I could preach for a month on that. Okay, go on. Uh huh. Because, because as he is, so are we. When? In this world. <laughs> it's right there. As he is, so are we in this world. Boy, as he is, mm. let me tell you something. Preach this truth, don't preach religion, preach this truth, and you will change the world. Hear what I'm telling you. Jesus came for a reason. Question is, did he fulfill his purpose? Did he? If he did, then let's tell it like it is. He sure did. And I am the product of his work. I am the product, the result of his success. the way you should think. You are the product of his work. You are the result of his success. He came and lived before God and obeyed God. You see, he obeyed God. And the Bible says through the obedience of one, many are made what? Righteous. His obedience gave me the righteousness of God. See, and now I don't get blessed by obedience. You didn't hear me. Let me explain to you. In the New Testament, in all of the teaching of the New Testament, God doesn't tell us to obey the word of God. He doesn't.
doesn't tell us to do that. In the Old Testament, they were told to obey the law. In the New Testament, we are not told to obey it. We're told to do it. And there's a big difference between the two. We are to live it out. We come like, you know, Jesus, the Bible says, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He came to step into that which was written concerning him, and he fulfills the word concerning him. That's what we ought to do. You look in the word. You see what concerns you. You walk in the light of it. You're not trying to obey anything. You're just doing what the word says. You call yourself what he calls you. And you declare you are where he says you are. And what belongs to you belongs to you. Glory to God. That's it. That's Christianity. He obeyed God and gave us his righteousness. The Bible says he was delivered to death on account of of our transgressions and he was raised to life for our justification and justification is a marvelous doctrine in the word of god marvelous what does it mean oh dear oh dear justification my goodness it's bigger than forgiveness it's bigger than remission what is justification Oh, God, that I am justified. This is a marvel. What it means is that I am declared not guilty. You don't understand what that means. He didn't say I was forgiven. Oh, no. That's not what he's saying. He says I'm not even guilty. What about all the dumb things I did? He says, you're justified. I can't understand that. Lord, what do you mean? I told them guys who came out this morning and yesterday. You came out here, sinner. Wicked and evil. An enemy of God. But you walked away from here, justified. Before God. This is beyond human comprehension justified it's there Romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ justified meaning declared not guilty not guilty why is his son because you're born again. The man who committed all those sins is dead. I said, he's dead? He said, yeah, he died in Christ. When you receive Christ as Lord of your life, and you receive eternal life from him to your spirit, you were born again. You became a new creation in Christ without a past. And you stand before God a new creation without a past. So all the sins you ever committed were committed by the old man who's dead in Christ. He was crucified with Christ. That became a reality when you received Jesus as Lord of your life. Your past was catapulted, backdated to Calvary. And you started your new life with his resurrection you're a new man that's why he says you're not guilty you're justified dear Lord I thought you took my sins away he says yes I took your sins then you died are you hearing this he bore my sins before he died. He took my sins upon himself on that cross and died. And when he died, I died. 
When he was buried, I was buried. When God raised him up, I was raised up. A new man. A new creation. Oh. Oh. I wish I had a month. Two meetings every day for a month. You see what I mean? To impress that. It, it, this, is, this is the biggest thing in all the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So he says, we should also bear. He says, let us also bear the image of the heavenly. So I gave you first John chapter 4, verse 17. And the latter part of it, you already read, uh, you know. Okay, go again. Just read the whole thing one more time. Want to go. Herein is our love made perfect. Mm -hmm. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Uh huh. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That's right. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. Let that become your confession. Your daily confession. Until it becomes your present day, present hour consciousness. Until you live that way, you think that way, everything about you goes in that direction. As he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. So I said, preach this truth. This is the reality. This is the truth. Preach it. And make it plain. Be bold about it. It will defend itself. Because it's real. Hey, it's simple. The man died. It's simple. And God raised him up. His work was complete. Glory to his name. Amen. At this time, if you can accept this truth, you can walk out of your pain. You can walk out of your sickness. You can walk out of any disease. You can walk out of any condition. Amen. Just by simply accepting this reality. That's what it is. You may have been living your life from day to day on certain pills because this is what you've known. This is what you've been taught to carry on every day. Your life is hanging on a thin thread. Is this what God wants? No, that's not what God wants for you. God wants things to be different for you. He says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's what God wants. He wants your life perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. We read that yesterday, James 1 4. Perfect and entire. I told you about that. You remember? Yeah. Wanting nothing. Your life complete. Complete. And you never talk like the rest of the world. It broke my heart. Broke your heart. <laughs> if Jesus lives there, nothing can break your heart. <laughs> See, don't use the terms of the word. Broke your heart. Please, don't break my heart. 
Oh, break your heart. Say, nothing in the world can break my heart. My heart is the house of the living God. I'm tough as a rock. Sure. I know who I am. See, God heals pounds of flops. He don't want no CCs in his army. Say, I'm tough. Say it again, I'm tough. I'm not a CC. I'm tough. Say it again, I'm tough. Tough. Boy, you sound tough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every day remind yourself, I know who I am. See, I'm not an ordinary person. I know who I am. And the hand of God is on your life. Glory to his name forever. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.